Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about rentals for your wedding day. Because I know this is a big stressor for a lot of you, so I thought, like, why not just sit down and compile a list of a bunch of different things that you need to know about when it comes to rentals for your wedding day. So if you're note takers, now's your time to go grab your notepad, grab your pen, and get ready, because I'm gonna be throwing a lot of information your way. But this is one of those key fundamental areas that I know people have a lot of questions about, so I figured let's stick as much information as possible in one video. So hopefully you guys walk away from this video feeling more equipped to figure out rentals for your wedding day. Now before we launch into that, I wanna give you guys one more reminder. This Saturday, we do have that little mixer that I mentioned before. Whether you are on the hunt for a vendor, or you just wanna hang out with some cool, like-minded couples, or you just wanna come and grab a drink with me, we are getting together this Saturday at Urbanwood. All the information for tickets will be down below. I have to give a quick shout out though because we do have a couple sponsors for this event. One lucky couple will win $500 worth of flowers to 50flowers.com, which if you guys don't know, they're an online floral wholesaler that's open to the public. So if you guys are contemplating doing some DIY florals, you should for sure look into that. In addition to that, Generation Tux is kindly gifting a free suit rental to that lucky couple as well. So, you know, if you are interested in getting some free flowers for your wedding day and a rad suit rental for free, free nine to free, get your ticket. Link down below. Come hang out with me. Let's be in-person, real-life friends. Okay, cool. So now, rentals. <laughs> Without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. I will be covering the most basic of rentals. We're not gonna get into lounge furniture or any sort of extraneous or um, less common rentals. We're just gonna stick to the most common ones. So first, we're gonna talk about individual items, uh, such as tables, linens, those sorts of things. And then at the end, I'm gonna share with you um, my tips and my experiences to help you make more informed decisions moving forward so you feel real good about booking a rental company. Okay, tables. The most common that we see are either rounds or rectangles. With rounds, they're often described in inches, so it could be a 60 inch round or a 72 inch round. With rectangular tables, they're defined by feet. I don't know why it's done this way, but it is, okay? Okay. So um, most commonly, we will see a 60 inch round or a 72 inch round or an eight foot rectangular table. Very rarely will we see a six foot rectangular table for guest seating, but we will see those for places like your guest book and gift table, potentially for a dessert table, depending on how many desserts you have. That's kind of what the six footer is typically reserved for. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this out real fast. A majority of rental companies will say that a 60 inch table can seat 10 people, a 72 inch table can seat 12 people, and an eight foot table can seat 10 people. Now, I don't know what sort of stick figure type people the rental companies are thinking that you're gonna be smushing together at these tables, but I disagree with those numbers wholeheartedly. And sorry, rental companies, I just, I've never seen that work successfully. 12 people at a 72 inch table is just crazy to me. I don't see that happening. So instead, at a 60 inch table, you can expect to seat about eight people. You can go up to nine, you can squeeze in 10, but I would not go above that at all. I just had a client recently ask me if she could potentially do up to 11 because she saw on the rental website that they said that they could hold 10. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're talking eight, nine, maybe 10, but definitely not over that. With a 72 inch table, you can comfortably seat 10 adults. You can go over that, you can push it to 12 if you absolutely have to, but I wouldn't recommend it in most situations. And then with an eight foot table, you can seat eight people. So that kind of gives you a general idea of how many people you can seat per table. Yeah? Great. Next you have chairs. Now there's a whole myriad of chair options out there. The only thing that I will say about like what you should and should not do when it comes to chairs is try to avoid the squeaky plastic ones. Like I know they're the most cost effective, but they're also really loud. You know what I'm talking about? Like the Samsonite ones that you used to sit on in the multi-purpose room in your elementary school and someone would move and you're just like the whole time during the assembly. And to be honest, during an assembly, I guess it was a little bit of a relief because those were really boring sometimes. But you don't want that noise continuously going off with 150 people on your wedding day. So that's my one recommendation when it comes to chairs, like selection. Try to avoid the plastic squeaky ones. Just like, I've seen some things, just avoid those. With chairs, you're gonna wanna add about 10 extra onto your rental order, just in case. You know, you might end up wanting to place a few in the cocktail hour area for people to sit down. You might get one or two that shows up and it is a little wonky, so you're gonna wanna replace it with one that's a little bit better. You don't have to do this, but it's strongly recommended. Linens, okay, I do get asked this question a lot. Do I need floor length linens? <laughs> do you need them? 
No, but have you seen rental tables? Because they nasty. <laughs> they are not attractive looking tables. The legs are just, they're not pretty. They're not very uh, wedding -y looking. So if you can, I do recommend that you get floor length linens. Now, inevitably the next question that follows that is, well, should I buy them or should I rent them? And if you haven't seen like, um, did the, oh gosh, DIY bride fail video. Yeah, that I did. I did that quite a long time ago. Basically, I bought my own linens and it was a wreck. Okay, it was a wreck. Disaster. Don't do that. I hated it. It was really bad. So I do recommend getting floor length linens for your tables. If you're trying to figure out what the measurement for that is, just take the length of your table and add 60 inches because the table is about 30 inches tall and you're going to want an even drop on both sides. The last two larger objects that we're going to talk about are a tent and dance floor. Now, I will say that I have very little experience with renting either one of them only because most locations that we work don't require them. However, I do feel as though they're important to address in this video because I know a lot of you are probably in places that might need one, if not both. When it comes to a tent, I have no idea what size you need. You're gonna need to ask your rental company that because again, I have very little experience with that. Just ask what size they recommend based on the size of your party and what you're hosting under the tent itself. What I will say though is tents have a very, very large deposit, usually about 50% of the overall rental cost. Let's say the tent is $3,000. That means your deposit is going to be $1,500. And most likely that amount will be non-refundable. If there is a chance of rain on your wedding day, there are other people that are getting married on that same exact day. So if everyone went in and reserved a tent and then decided to bail out at the last minute because the weather got better, that rental company would kind of be screwed. So understandably, there is a high, high, high deposit when it comes to these. So you do need to be sure that you absolutely need one. But if you need one, you need one. And that deposit will end up going towards the rental cost of the tent anyhow. So if you're gonna get a tent, just keep in mind that it's gonna be a big deposit, like hefty, hefty deposit. So be sure that you absolutely need it before booking one otherwise you're not seeing that money back dance floor again this isn't one that we do very often simply because most of the venues that we work at kind of already have a built-in dance floor either because it's indoor flooring or some sort of cement pad but if you are on grass or any sort of natural uneven uh, flooring you might want to look into a dance floor again with the sizes it varies based on your guest count I actually found a great calculator uh, for dance floor sizes I'm gonna leave that down below but for the most part you'll see about a third of your guests dancing at it any given time. So you will need a dance floor for that amount of people. As with the tent, defer to your rental company on this one though. They will be the absolute best guides for you and they'll make sure that you get the appropriate size for your event. You may be constricted in your space no matter what. You may not be able to get a 20 foot by 20 foot dance floor even though your guest count requires it because you just don't have enough venue space. And then you just kind of make do with it, maybe scoot some tables out of the way. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes venues will also require that you rent a tarp to bring into place underneath that. Now let's talk tabletop rentals. And with that, I mean um, plates, glassware, and utensils. Plates are pretty straightforward. You're gonna wanna go with your guest count and then add on vendor meals to that so they have something to eat off of too. And then usually about uh, an extra 10 or so plates just in case one shows up chipped or cracked. That way you have plenty of plates for all of your guests and vendors to eat off of. Same can be said for utensils. Now, do keep in mind that you don't need to order spoons if you don't have anything that's eaten with spoons. <laughs> you absolutely can cut those out. If you're serving pizza, you probably don't need utensils at all whatsoever. If you're serving soup, then you're gonna need a spoon. So take into account what you're actually serving because that will better help you decide what utensils you'll be getting for your meal. A big thing that gets forgotten here though is that if you are serving cake, you will need a dessert plate and a dessert fork. You can't expect people to hang on to their salad fork from dinner to eat their cake later. So you will need a whole nother set of forks for those. As with the plates, you're gonna want an additional 10 or so of each of the utensils that you're renting because these get dropped all the time. And I do mean all the time. I've seen guests drop their utensils or I, you know, there's just a whole, a whole lot of things that can happen. So be sure to add on a little contingency there. Glassware. All right, so I feel like I need to stretch before this one. Um, there are so many different types of glassware. So many different kinds. Um, water, wine, mixed drinks, um, beer, um, there just are so many different types of glasses that you can get. For the sake of conversation right now, I'm just gonna focus on alcoholic beverages and pretend that we're only using one style of cup. If you're doing different styles of cups, you do need to speak directly with your caterer or with your bartending company, and they will help you figure out how much you need of each glass. That is out of my depth. That is above my pay grade. I'm just, I can help you come up with a general number if you have one sort of glass type. And so we'll focus on one alcoholic glass, okay? Okay, 
I know my limits and like that's I don't know how many highballs you need. When it comes to drinks, the general rule of thumb here is that a guest will have one drink per hour of your event. I'm gonna do like the math on the screen for you. So 150 guests at five hours, so usually one hour for cocktail hour and about four hours for your reception, is going to be 750 glasses. Now that's just a generalized number, but it is really, really helpful to have that number in mind when renting glassware. I'd say for water cups, you should at least, if you're not having a water cup on the table, you should at least plan on three water glasses per, like water cups or water glasses per person as well. Now let's talk about fees. You will most likely be seeing several different fees on your rental quotes, and they are there for good reason. On most quotes, you will see delivery, setup, and pickup. So that it means that the company is bringing it to you, setting it up for you, and taking it away after your event is over. You also may see something called a service fee. Yes, that is supposed to be there, and no, that is not a tip. That is for the office hours. That's for the gal you spoke to on the phone who gave you the quote. That's to keep the lights on in the warehouse. That's to run the trucks. <laughs> that is that is the cost of doing business. So no, a service fee is not a tip. It is what covers the back end running of the business. So now let's dive into, uh, into, into the Jamie Wolfer tips here. <laughs> What is that? Tip number one, order from one company. Like just make your life easier and order from one company because managing multiple delivery times, multiple setup times, and multiple teardown and pickup times is, is an, a nightmare. Take it from someone who's done it before. It's not fun. And especially if you don't have a coordinator to help you figure that stuff out, skip it. Try to get it all from one company. So even if one, another company has cheaper chairs, who cares? Make your life easier and get it all through one place. Tip number two, Order for your full guest count. Even though you know that you're going to lose some of these people, order for your full guest count. Because you can always go back to the rental company later. They'll give you a cutoff date for when you can't make any more changes. But you can go back to them later and say, hey, we only need 130 chairs instead of 150. And they go, that's great. We'll go ahead and take them off your order. But let's say you decide to ballpark it at 130 and then turns out you need 145. You go back to the rental company and they say, oh no, we've already committed chairs to other people. We don't have 15 extra chairs for you. Now you find yourself in a little bit of a pickle. So when you're getting quotes, get it for the full amount instead of what you kind of guess it might end up being because you can always cut later, but sometimes you can't add back on. Tip number three, make sure delivery times are very, very clear. Very clear because stuff can get complicated and confusing behind the scenes. So make sure you know the delivery window within which your stuff should be delivered. Because if your florist is showing up at noon and your rentals may not be dropped off until between one o'clock and three o'clock, then your florist has a whole hour of not doing anything. So rental windows are super important to be aware of. Tip number four, it never hurts to ask, what do you recommend? from the rental company. If you're not quite sure how many to order, just ask. Also feel free to ask your caterer or your bartending company. You are not doing this alone. You are paying some uh, highly seasoned professionals. Lean on them and always ask for help if these numbers feel confusing at all. Tip number five, minimal orders. Sometimes I'll hear a couple say, well, what if we just order linens from this company? And most likely that means the company will not deliver for you. They might have something called like a shop minimum or a minimum order amount where if you are renting less than $1,000 worth of stuff, it's not worth it to them to get everything onto the truck and bring it out to you. Instead, that may mean that you're picking it up and you're dropping it back off. So that's something to be aware of. And then tip number six, this is six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yay! Be aware that dropping off and picking up on the same day is going to be more expensive and with good reason. If you're gonna have rental guys come back to your venue at one o'clock in the morning, it's after normal hours and you will be charged more for that. Rental companies love when they can drop off on a Thursday or a Friday and pick up on a Monday because their most congested times for delivery and pickup are on Saturdays. So anything that they can do to incentivize you having drop off and or pick up at a later time at, or at a different time, any other time than Saturday, they're gonna go for it. But some venues won't allow for that to happen. That is also perfectly normal. Just bear in mind that you will be paying more for drop off and for pickup all on the same day. So if you can sweet talk your venue into you know picking up the next morning, you might save yourself some sweet change. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like the video, be sure to, you know, like the video down below. I cannot believe we are 67,000 people strong here right now. That is insanity to me and I'm so excited and I can't wait to hit 100K, okay? Okay, so be sure to subscribe because I think it'd be really fun. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget about the mixer coming up this weekend. I can't wait to see you. Ticket information down below. Um, 
that's it. This has been a long video. Somebody shut Jamie up. Okay, bye. And until next week, bye guys.